And welcome friends, this is Miami CO Indiana. Today we're going to look at space heaters. Why some space heaters claim they can heat only one room, 150 square feet. Others claim medium sized rooms, up to 350 square feet. And others just claim they can heat large rooms, a thousand square feet or even more. But they all use 1500 watts. Isn't the theory a watt in equals so much heat out? So no matter if you buy a $10 space heater, a $50 one, or a $250 one, you're going to get the exact same results. Is that the truth? Let's find out today. A few tools we're going to be using today. First is a digital thermometer that uses a laser pointer. It tells you the temperature of wherever you're pointing. We're going to give it a test to make sure our equipment's working right. So right over here, that's the temperature of the room. The big number 72. The 64 above there, that's what the uh, heating system is set to, the central heating system. As you can tell, I don't want that on. So we should have a reading of the wall here close to the 72. It may not be exact, but we should hit it close. And as you see, it's hitting right next to 72.3. So we can say that this is reading accurately. It matches the thermometer there on the wall. The second thing we're going to use is a watt meter. The center line, sorry for the bumping, right here is going to tell you how many watts are being used by whatever's plugged into it. So at zero now, I have the lamp here, this table lamp plugged into it. I have a 60 watt, don't know if you can read it there, but that is a 60 watt incandescent light bulb old-fashioned one. So we turn the light on, we should read close to 60 watts. It's usually never exact, but we should be close to it. It takes a minute for the reading to come in. And there you see we are using 61.3, 61.2. So yes, I would say that is accurate. So our watt meter is working and our temperature is working. Let's get on with the test to see what we have going on. The three heaters we're going to test today, a fan heater, don't, met, don't even pay attention to the brand, there's all kinds of these that look exactly the same. These are rated small room heaters. If you go to the store, it'll say on the box, small room, up to 150 square feet, 1500 watts max setting. Second, we're going to use a baseboard heater listed as medium rooms. This also falls in the category of oil-filled radiator heaters. Ceramic tower heaters, all say medium rooms, up to 350 square feet. The last one we're going to look at is an infrared heater. This just happens to be the Home Comfort brand. Also 1500 watts, but claims to heat large rooms or large areas up to or even exceeding 1000 square feet. So how can that be? Isn't it always said a watt in equals so much heat out? So no matter if you buy a $10 space heater, a $50 one, or a $500 one, if it uses the same watts, you'll have the same heating results. That's what we're trying to see here, if that is true or not. So we're going to test the fan heater first. So you have to bear with me. I've got to change the plug here out of the lamp into the fan heater. So hold on with me here. I'm just going to put you down a second. I'm going to unplug the lamp and plug in my fan heater, which I've done. So now we have the fan heater plug, and we're going to go ahead and set all of these on maximum thermometer, which so it won't turn off. It doesn't make the temperature hotter, just so it won't turn off. And we're going to go to the highest setting, the 1500. Let's see what we get. So I'm just going to crank it up. Let's see what our watch says. How much wattage are we drawing? Looks like we're about 1428. Well, we're going to let it stabilize because it does kind of jump around when you first turn things on. Most 1500 watt heaters will not use 1500 watts. They're almost all below. Hey, it looks like it's stabling out near the 1421 mark. Or 26, rather. Went up to 1427. I would say that's where it's stabling out there. So we're going to count this one as 14. Sorry for the wind there. I'm going to write that down though. 
1426. Now let's see what kind of temperature we have coming out of the heater with our laser thermometer here. Now the heating coil cannot be any hotter part of a heater than the heating coil. So I'm trying to hit the heating coil when I'm in here. And we're going to try, there's 209. That's the highest I've seen so far. We can go all the way around, but the hottest point is normally going to be on the top center. 209, 215, 218. You saw that real quick. 220, 219 again. And that looks like what we're going to get. 220 was the highest number I saw. So it's going to be very, very close to that. I do want to mention something while I have this heater on. I'm only standing about two feet back from it. I can hardly feel, feel any heat at all coming out of the heater. And I'll tell you why. If I hand, put my hand out, I can feel it. These type of heaters, the heat comes out and goes up. Because the fans are so weak in them. But it still absolutely will heat a room. No question about it. Okay, so 220 was the hottest temperature we have, so that's where we're going to mark this one as. I'm going to turn it off. And we'll go down to fan heater. 1426 was the average wattage. 220 degrees was the hottest temperature we could find. Okay, we're going to switch now to the baseboard heater. Again, I'm going to put you down just a second. So hold on. I'm switching the fan heater off and the baseboard heater plugged in. So we're back to zero again because I have that heater off. But we're going to go turn it on. I'm going to turn it on the maximum setting, which is going to be 1500 watts. I have the thermostat all the way up so it won't turn off. And here we go. It's on 1500 watts. Let's see what we get. Again, it takes a minute to stabilize. 1459, 55. So we'll let go just a second. It looks like it's pretty much stable there. 1453, 52, 50. Pretty stable there. We're going to mark this one as 1450. That seems to be. The average wattage on high so we'll put this one at 1450 watts which is a little higher than that one but not too much let's take our thermometer we're going to point it down in we're going to point it down in so we could try to hit the coils I saw 265 260 278 280 284 we're going to go back and forth. It's 287 I just saw. So far I think 287 was the highest I've seen. Whoops, 296, 297. Okay, I just saw 335. That's what I was looking for because I know this was capable of getting over 300. 335 now. Heating coils pretty much are heated as hot as they're going to get because it's been plugged in long enough. And I'm just going, trying to hit the coils. Looks like that's it. 335, and I've done this test before, and that's about what I end up with. 330, 340 range is the highest. We're going to put 335. It looks like that's the highest I saw. So we have the baseboard heater, 1450, which is a little bit more wattage than the fan heater. But we have quite a bit more heat measured, 335 degrees. Okay, now we got this one to test. So again, I'm going to change the plugs. Let me turn that heater off. I'm going to pull that plug out, and we're going to plug in the infrared heater which is plugged in now I want you to see when you plug an infrared heater in it has what's called ghost electricity but very little I don't know if you can see that because of the glare it's drawing 0.8 amps not even on it's because it has a circuit board and we have an LED light on 
So it does draw a little ampere, it's just being plugged in. Well, let's go ahead and turn it on. We're going to turn it on. I'm going to use the remote here that comes with it, just for ease. And I set it at 90 degrees again so we know that it will stay on the maximum. So I have it on 1500 watts, which is the only setting for this one, 90 degrees. One thing before we go any further I want to say, and I measured this before coming on camera, the middle of my coffee table here, the middle point of my coffee table where I'm standing right now, I'm exactly 12 feet away from this heater. And believe it or not, I can feel the heat blowing this, this far. From our fan heater to the left of it that we first tested, two feet away I could barely feel it. I can actually, this being 12 feet away, can feel that heat all the way down here. So it tells you there's a lot higher fan going on there. So wattage here, we got to check the wattage. It's had enough time to stabilize. Again, sorry for the glare there. If you can't read it, I can tell you it's 1386. I think you can see it there. It's pretty stable there too. We're going to count this as 1386 for the wattage. And let's take our thermometer and see what kind of heat. I cannot hit the elements on this one because the elements are inside the machine or too far down for me to hit. I saw 635. 622, so 635 so far is the hottest. Six forty-eight. I don't know if you saw that, but I did. It varies no matter what part you hit, it's gonna vary. Six fifty-five, six fifty-nine, six hundred, six oh four. Hottest I could get on it was 659, and when I've done this test before, that's about where I reached, around 650. So 659 was the hottest temperature I could get out of it. So I'm going to turn this one off too. Guess I'll use the remote here. Hey, we'll have a minute to chat what's going on here. Well, let's look at our numbers. The fan heater ran on an average of 1,426 watts on high, produced the hottest temperature I could find is 220. Our baseboard heater, that one, 1,450 watts, it used the most wattage of any of them, and we were able to get a temperature up to 335 in there. Our infrared heater at 1,386 watts, which is the lowest wattage of all three, we found a temperature of 659 degrees in the front of the heater. How can that be? Because they all use relatively the same amount of watts. We would think the temperature would be the same. I'm going to explain that to you. And I hope you have an open mind. You have to listen. The Stefan Boltzmann Law says if you can get the temperature of the emitter higher without using any more energy you have a more efficient heat source. That's the Stefan Boltzmann Law of Physics. So in other words, if you can get the emitter, which is the heating coil in a heater, hotter, hotter temperature, without using any more energy, which would be electricity in an electric heater, you have a more efficient system. Well, how can this one have such more higher temperatures than these two? It's because of the heating elements they use. Most heaters like this, like this, or ceramic, only ceramic puts their heating elements in ceramic, uh, use a different type of alloy. They use nichrome, which has a melting point of approximately 500 degrees. So if we found over 500 degrees here, or here, we would have a shorting out heater and we would have melting metal because the type of resistor they use, the alloy, can only handle up to 500 degrees. A good quality infrared heater uses what's called tungsten carbide as their element. And this alloy, are you ready for this, can handle temperatures up to 5,198 degrees. That's the melting point. 5,198 degrees. And for our 
Celsius, friends, that's 2,870 degrees Celsius. So you could have those elements in there at 5,000 degrees before they'd melt. If we have the temperatures, the 659 in this heater, it would destroy itself. It couldn't handle it. It's because the alloy that they use in these type of heaters can only handle up to 500 degree heat before they would be destroyed. So that's how we can get higher temperatures in the infrared style heaters. Now, the big factor is though why this is rated small room, these are rated medium, these are rated large or large areas, is because of the delivery of the heat. When you use one of these, if you try to use one of these in a very large area, I call this a vertical heater and I call this a vertical heater. Most people call them convection, I call them vertical. The heat, as I said when I stood in front of it, comes out and up. So you're essentially taking the heat out of the unit and going straight up to the ceiling, which is fine if you have a closed room. What will happen, the heat will travel up to the ceiling. Once it rests my ceiling here, once it reaches enough heat is built up onto the ceiling, it will start coming down the walls and come back into the heater. But if you have an open floor plan and trying to use this to heat a large area, once the heat comes down from the ceiling, it's going to take the least path of resistance and go right through the doorway and heat the next ceiling. It'll go right down here. Here's the heat up here. And it'll go whoop right in here and start heating the ceiling. So if you try to use these type of heaters in a large area, you have a very effective ceiling heater. However, if you put this in a small room and turn it on and close the door, it'll completely heat the room. The heat will build in the ceiling, drop to the floor, and go back through the heater. That's why this type of heater can only heat small areas up to 150 square feet. Put it in a 10 by 15 bedroom with eight foot ceilings, I guarantee you, even if it's really cold out, it'll heat it. These medium sized heaters just have a more surface area for heating. They can heat larger areas, but still, they have the vertical heating. The heat from this has no fan. It relies on convection, goes straight up to the ceiling. Once enough heat reaches the ceiling and pools, it'll start falling down the walls. But again, if you have an open floor plan you're trying to use it in, the heat's going to go to the next ceiling and you're going to lose most of your heat up at the ceiling. That's why they can't heat real large areas. But again, fantastic choice in a medium sized room. It will heat it. But infrared heaters work differently. I call them horizontal heaters. As I said from my demonstration, when the heat comes out here, it blows straight forward. It keeps coming and coming and coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. And coming that even when I'm 12 foot back or more, I can still feel the heat hitting me. It puts horizontal heat, it puts the heat down where you live. You don't live on the ceiling. It puts the heat down and eventually, because heat rises, it eventually will rise. But it does heat things at the lower level first before that happens. That's why they work so much better for large areas. Also, heat exchangers. There are heat exchangers and an infrared heater, so not only do you have just the heating element to transfer heat, you have a chamber, like in a furnace, a heating chamber or exchanger that also heats up that can transfer heat as well, making it really easier for cold air coming in to get heated through. You have to understand on these, we have a quarter inch little coil, that's the only chance it has when the air moves through to get heated. For those reasons, there is no scam, there is no fraud going on. These heaters say small rooms because that's what they're intended for and that's what they'll do. It's not a scam, it's not a fraud. These say medium sized rooms because that's what they're capable of doing. If you try to put it in a whole house application, even a small house, it's not going to do it. If you have eight, 900 square feet, it's not made for that and they don't claim it is. These will heat up to a thousand square feet or even more. If you have a well-insulated home, 
and the temperatures are not ridiculous outside, I find the infrared heat will heat my 960 foot home down to about 10 degrees. Once it gets single digits, zero or below, I do have to supplement because it's just too cold even for it. But even at 15 degrees, it'll keep it 70 degrees inside. And most times, even where I live in the north, the temperatures don't go that often down in the single digits, zero or below. So it works fantastic in my application. Not downgrading any heaters, I'm just saying. When you see in a store marked small, medium, or large rooms, it's not a con game, it's not fraud, it's not a scam. It really is what they're supposed to be labeled. If you buy this heater thinking you're going to heat a thousand square feet, it won't do it and it doesn't claim to do it. If you think this heater is going to heat a thousand square feet, again, with the right application and the good insulation, it will absolutely do it. I think a lot of it has to do not only with the higher temperatures, but the way the heat's delivered, a horizontal way instead of the vertical way. So I hope this helps people. Again, I'm not trying to cause any conflicts or arguments or anything like that, but you're welcome to leave any comments you want. Again, here's our results of our test. Fan heater versus baseboard versus infrared heater. There's the temperatures we got off each one. I really appreciate you joining me today. This is Miami CO Indiana, hoping you have a great day. So long, everyone.